Good evening and welcome to our first Facebook Live of the Town Council meeting for Western Sydney. I'm afraid that this evening we won't be able to take any of your comments on Facebook, but we hope that you enjoyed the meeting and hopefully some of us will address any comments that you've got after the meeting. I'm now going to hand over the chair to uh, Malcolm Nicholson, who is our town clerk. Thank you, Malcolm. Well, in fact, it's for the mayor now to open the meeting. Um, I don't believe the chaplain is here, so you may wish to move on to public participation, Mr. Mayor. Indeed, I will. So um, I do believe, well, first of all, welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, the public who might be watching us on Facebook Live, and thank you for joining us. Uh, it, uh, it does open up the ability for people to engage and see what's actually going on, uh, which happens in the town hall quite frequently. Um, and uh, I would like to thank my colleagues on the council who have all got here tonight. Uh, as uh, It's a lovely sunny evening, so uh, there would have probably been more in enjoyable things to do, if not more pressing. Um, however, I do believe we have two members of the public here to speak to us tonight, so they would if, if we can let them into the meeting and um, and if they could introduce themselves and uh, like to speak to or address the councillors. Hi Sophie, I think that you wanted to speak first. Um, we haven't got your video just up at the moment. Hi Sophie, hi. Thank you so much. Whenever you're ready, please do address the council. Fab. Um, so, hello everyone. Um, my name's Sophie. Um, I'm a resident of Western. Um, I'd just like to speak today at this meeting about how we as a town can respond positively to the Black Lives Matter movement and about the ways in which we as a collective can create a lasting change. Um, over the last month, I have seen countless examples of the ways that the people of Western have united in their show of support for the Black Lives Matter movement following the murder of George Floyd. Um, at the start of June, a peaceful demonstration in support of the movement was held outside the Tropicana. Um, here, just over 150 signs were placed in honour of the movement. Um, following this, residents of the town have created a Black Lives Matter Facebook page, um, specifically for Western, um, and it's amassed over 1,200 members already. Um, here, people post articles, media and self-produced interviews um, which encourage an open discussion across many different races, age ranges, genders and backgrounds. Um, these past weeks have required the white and white passing members of our town to confront some startling truths. Um, for centuries, white people have benefited from institutionalised racism and systems which discriminate black people simply because of the colour of their skin. Um, I cannot speak on behalf of the people of colour in this town, but I can imagine it must be frustrating to see that these conversations are happening now when they should have happened a long time ago. Um, I'm calling for the councillors of the Town Council to receive a thorough diversity training from a Black Lives Matter representative or affiliated organisation. Um, by receiving this professional development, councillors will be able to challenge their current thinking grow and begin to learn and become more aware of the racial inequality still present in our town and the UK. Um, this will need to be in-depth training that goes far beyond the usual tick, tick box standard that corporate training usually provides. Um, with councillors more informed on the issues of racism, we as a town can build on the positive Black Lives Matter movement developing as we speak. Um, our councils are supposed to reflect the interests of its people and it's very clear that many people in Western would like to make a change. Thank you. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you. Uh, Nakaya, would you like to speak? Hi. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. It's Neka here. Um, so basically, um, just following from what Sophie has said, the a lot of people ask what Black Lives Matter is and why all of a sudden it's of such interest. It's, this movement has been going on for a long time. Um, the hashtag started in 2016 and then it died a death because people lost interest. And it wasn't until George Floyd was killed in, whilst he was being videoed. And because it was how he was killed for such a long time with having someone kneeling on his neck, um, went viral and people are now talking about it a lot more now and I guess because of COVID-19 
during lockdown, people had less distractions and actually people are having more time to think about what can we do about making life better. So anti-blackness is not an American specific phenomenon. This is global and also the UK is not innocent. You know, after having 400 years of second class citizens, subjugation, dehumanization, we can't expect that racism was wiped out after 60 years of political freedom. It's an ongoing thing that people need to talk about and keep doing and not put it to one side and think, okay, well, we've got the Equality Act, um, everything is okay. You know, we, are, we do live in a world where, which, you know, it's sad to say it was developed by white supremacists and we are, well, you are all direct beneficiaries of this system, um, whether you are racist or not. Um, as a white person, you don't have to worry about the, the skin, the color of your skin when you go into a shop. I mean, I still have to worry when I'm walking down a, a road, in particular if it's in an affluent area, I do get people being suspicious about me. Um, I have had the police called on me because they thought I was trying to break into a property. I have security following me around shops and it's not just expensive shops, even the local shop I um, live next to in Western Supermare, the security guard follows me around. If I go to the airport at a check-in, I get stopped 90% of the time because of the assumptions people have. They think, I must be carrying drugs. My husband is white. He walks through the gate. He gets through every time. They don't ask him any questions, but I'm always the one that's stopped. So, you know, we can't say racism um, has stopped. It also affects employment, housing. Um, I did an experiment once. Um, I applied for a couple of jobs and I used my English sounding middle name, which is Barbara. And I used my partner's name at the time, which was Wilson, to just to see what would happen. I applied for jobs, which I'm perfectly um, qualified for, have the experience. And I got a 100% response rate. In comparison to when I applied for jobs using my name, Naka Opene, and the response rate was significantly less. So, um, and as I said, even in housing as well, I've looked at rental properties with my sister. I've been with her to attend appointments and I've had a couple of landlords who have been very upfront and have said, you know what, I'd like to rent the property to you, but I'm worried because of what my neighbors will think. Now you think this was the 1970s, but it still happens today. It's just that people don't talk about it. And now we've had, we've had more, we've had a lot more um, discussion in the media, more people are talking about it. And, you know, my, my experiences are not unique. There's lots of academic studies. So if you want to read anything, I can email you lots of things to read. Um, so, so basically the Facebook page we have, which was developed over a month ago, has generated a lot of people in the community joining in sharing information. It's also become a safe space to talk about racism. Um, we had a picnic on Sunday, which was just a nice social, just to get people to join up face to face and build a stronger community. Because the more you get to know people, the less you are afraid of them when they don't look like you. And um, we've, got, um, we, we've got people who are interested in education, improving the curriculum that's available um, to the local schools. So, um, so, so yes, I really welcome this opportunity with any engagement you're willing to do for the group. I can't support them, but we can help to facilitate whether it's a town hall meeting, um, use our platform. As Sophie said, we've got um, one, over 1,300 members and it's growing each day. You know, we would welcome that especially. And basically, you know, when someone in the community is down, it does affect the community. If you have, if you have an inclusive community, it means a better community and, you know, just a better environment for people to live in. So, you know, we would bite your hand off um, for any engagement that you're willing to have. Thank so. you, Nika. Finished? Yes, thank you. Yes, great. Thank you very much. Um, yes, and the, the points you've made, uh, I can assure you won't fall on deaf ears and uh, officers will pick that up um, in terms of what sort of training uh, they would feel that, that they could arrange uh, in this sort of format or whether we should wait a little longer for a person-to-person -person format then it's easier to meet and understand mm -hmm. the communities that we try and represent but we, we can assure you that these will be addressed um, and 
and you're quite right it won't be simply a tick box exercise i can assure you of that sophie so um thank you very much for joining us tonight you're very welcome to stay on and watch the meeting if you want to or gone to um becky will make sure whichever way that is otherwise i might have you accidentally voting and uh, changing decisions for us so <laughs> all <laughs> right thank bye. you very much for attending tonight thank bye -bye. you Thanks, bye. thank you uh, and colleagues, if uh, you can give me some leeway tonight, because obviously this is the first time I believe we have done it anything like this before, um, and uh, it is a strain for me as, at, as is it is for you. Um, so if we can have any uh, apologies for absence, please. Uh, Mr Mayor, the only apologies are from Councillor Richard Tucker, who is unwell of course. and unable to attend. Uh, and just for information for all councillors um, on the the news that poor Richard was not well, I took the liberty to send uh, a, a bowl of fruit, I believe it was, and a um, and a card from us all. So uh, he was he was very grateful. I think Catherine said he was delighted to to have been immediately thought about by his colleagues. Um, any declarations of interest? Absolutely. Sorry, sorry, uh, Mark. Yeah, uh, Councillor Hitchens. Councillor Hitchens as well, okay. please. Malcolm's got that. Thank you. Now. Okay. Okay. Any others from the floor, or from the computer? Okay. Thank you. So, any declarations of interest? Okay. Thank you. Uh, may we uh, approval of the last, the last uh, meeting's minutes, please, uh, of the sixteenth of March? Doesn't that feel like an awful long time ago? If we can have approval. Uh, the but John Crawford Hawley is the first one I saw, Councillor Crawford Hawley, and seconded by Alan Peak. Okay. okay. So um, I'm just going to Sorry, Mr. Mayor. I, I, was that uh, was that us? Totally Were you sorry, wanting could, to speak? Yes. Could could I withdraw that? Apparent, yes. apparently <laughs> Okay. So you'd like to speak on the minutes, was it? No, I, I, I proposed we accept them, but I was absent at the meeting, so I can't propose that. Um, <laughs> were, were you? Okay. Um, so, Councillor Porter, are you happy to propose them? And Ian Port, uh, Councillor Porter is uh, seconding them. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, uh, uh, item four, you've had uh, in your papers the Mayor's engagements, as um, uh, Councillor Caton would have seen. He would have been completely wasting his summer in terms of mayoral duties i have done four of which uh two have been online and two have i've been at the, the town hall at a desk so i think the decision in terms of uh, pushing things back uh is probably a fairly sensible one and it's proven to be so so um so four engagements and those uh, the two the two we had at the town hall um or the grove house was the and i Roger might remind me of her name, but it's the lady who made all the masks and what a cracking job she did now, as we're going to need so many of them. You're muted, Roger, if you're going to speak. Sorry, it's Lauren. Not Lauren, it was, yeah. It was very grateful for receiving those masks. Um, now, I'm going to take the liberty to bring um, Alex in to... Uh, Point uh, 11, item 11. Now, I'd like to thank Alex for, I know Alex only got back from a holiday today to work, um, and uh, and he was actually away, away on holiday, which is unusual these days, um, under the canvas, I believe, with the sunshine. Uh, so I'm very <laughs> grateful, <laughs> I'm very grateful he has turned up to answer questions, because many of my colleagues on the council here are aware that this is part of my work within North Somerset, and I did feel quite uncomfortable about the about trying to answer questions and uh, defend an idea. So I'm going to first of all I'll let Malcolm uh, talk to his report and then open it to the floor for questions and discussion with uh, Alex Hearn from North Somerset. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I did circulate a report, so I'll I'll be very brief actually. Um, I've, my contribution is essentially on the second page of the report, which is that these proposals need careful consideration. So I, I would suggest the town council should welcome North Somerset's renewed interest in improving the town, 
um, now called placemaking rather than regeneration, but there clearly is interest in um, improving Western. There's clearly a lot of interest from businesses here, uh, plus the college, the part, town centre partnership, the bid, etc. And um, I, I would suggest that perhaps as the uh, democratically elected body exclusively representing our town, in principle, we should uh, at least explore as a minimum this and perhaps uh, agree to take part in setting up the place agency from the start. Um, I know there are some controversial aspects to this about online presence and so on and where that should go. So uh, I totally understand that's to be explored later on and needs a lot of careful debate. So um, by all means explore that. I don't think that necessarily contradicts having a look at taking part in the um, agency um, as it's set up. Um, I do think longer term it would be better off for, um, needs to be more than a talk shop. Talk shop's a little unkind, it's how things start, but I think the ambition should be a community interest company, which is then independent of both councils um, includes business and community interests and truly represents Western in an independent way. Um, and finally, I've been invited to a couple of putative meetings. Um, I don't want you to think I'm mad to, to be at meetings. I think I can assist with my legal background from some of the setting up process. In principle, I do think the council should appoint its own representatives um, and perhaps a councillor should be in at the start. Um, if you follow my suggestion of um, um, exploring and taking part in it. But I've not made a firm recommendation because I do realise there are controversial aspects to this and therefore um, I await members' instructions. Okay. okay, I'm looking through screen so if you've got your hand up I will come to you. Otherwise I would like to give Alex, whilst you're thinking about questions, give Alex a moment to briefly um, speak about the whole placemaking principle and where we where and how we have got to where we are today okay thank you chair so um good evening everyone and thanks for having me um so i joined north somerset council uh, uh almost exactly two years ago um and i have the word placemaking in my job title um and western clearly as approximately half our population um, soon to be the second largest place in the west of England is 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 of major interest um, as a uh, as a regeneration opportunity um, my observation when I came in is that we could certainly at North Somerset Council broaden our approach um, we have done a lot of projects around public realm and improving buildings and we continue to you know pursue our heritage action zone projects which are, are really really valuable but on top of that we can potentially do an awful lot more and add uh, several more dimensions to that um, we've last six or seven months we've been working on a new um, uh, what we're calling the placemaking strategy for Western and I suppose it started out as certainly from North Somerset Council's perspective um, an exercise to renew our sort of regeneration vision for the town to reflect that additional set of dimensions but along the way um, we we and uh, the organization we worked with Turner Works um, did an awful lot of engagement with with the public and um encountered an awful lot of passion and energy and clearly um <coughs> for greater collaboration um and therefore I, I think this 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 place agency is a vehicle it is a is a is a reflection of that we there are several organizations in the town that are one way or another committed to um making western better whatever that means to us as as, as respective organizations and perhaps there's an opportunity for us to do that through greater collaboration so this is a proposal for a network of of like-minded organizations that are passionate about western um, and i would like you to think that includes us at north somerset council as well 
um, to to work uh, collectively, uh, principally through a series of specific initiatives um, around events and uh, programming cultural activity and generating communications activity, and of course, as as the paper says, um, exploring the online presence of the town. Um, so some some practical activities but but that activity reporting to a a focused board um that represents uh the town council north somerset council the business community the college um the bid and others so that we 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 get moving on 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 a greater level of collaboration and then i guess the last thing i'd say before you may you may have some questions is government expects towns to do this we are we are ahead of the game a little bit in doing this if if we if we progress this initiative um you may recall government dished out something called the towns fund um to uh various towns around the country last year just before the election actually and um it wasn't a bidding round they just gave it out now they've given that money out, they are now expecting those towns to create town boards to show that cross sector, cross town governance and leadership. So if we are going to be as a town, regardless of who we work for, but as a town better equipped to get the next round of towns funding or whatever the, the, the government next initiative is, it, it, we could be really ahead of the game if we've got a good positive new vision uh, for the town, um, a real sense of collaboration and collective working, um, and uh, a really good place identity that is that really supports the, all that's great about Western. We could be we could put ourselves in a much greater position. That's it. That's all I want to say for now. Thanks. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Alex. And um, I'm sure there'll be many questions for you to answer in in a moment. So I haven't had any indicators yet. So. Do we have anybody? Oh, oh, I see. Okay, no, that was a uh, uh, Councillor Crawford Hawley. Uh, thank you, Ms. Bear. Um, I, I actually want to hear what the councillors who are only town councillors. I don't mean that disparaging me, um, but I, I would prefer to hear what the the town councillors think of this, rather than in any way trying to influence it, as it were, from the North Somerset side. Um, all, all I would like to say is from that side, um, the history of trying to change things is, is a long one. Those of us who have been around for a long time know that um, pots of money come from government in dribs and drabs. Um, we, set up, we set up schemes to attend to issues in one bit of the town, then we go away and a couple of years later we attend to issues in another part of the town. Nothing seems to be coordinated. Even the names change. I mean, we now talk about placemaking. Five minutes ago we talked about regeneration. Ten minutes ago we talked about civic pride. And, and, and you know, we're, there is a danger, though I'm sure it's not going to happen this time, but there is a danger of reinventing the, the wheel and, and um, organising so many meetings that we all think we're terribly busy, um, but the end result is, is a mismatch of, of things. You only have to look around Western to see where it hasn't worked. Um, you think of the work done at Big Lamp Corner, the work done at the entrance to Grove Park, um, the work done on the promenade, um, uh, Princess Royal Square, Alexandra Parade, and, and so on. None of these schemes are coordinated. And, and so what I would like to see coming from this um, placemaking strategy, from this, uh, th this, this agency, is at least some coordination for the way we think Western is going to, is going to proceed. Um, uh, we need a commonality and, and we, need, we need to know in advance what money is going to come to us and how it is going to be apportioned rather than simply apportioned to individual schemes as they, as they come along. So I would very much like to hear what, what um, town councillors um, expect of this. That, that, that's the thing. I, what, what do they expect of it? Uh, we, we, we'll, we'll invite Alex back in a year's time to tell us what has been achieved. And uh, if it's the usual thing, 
well, you, you, you'll give us a very short speech. Um, hopefully, it'll be a, a long thing, Alex, and we'll have achieved a lot, um, despite the fact there's no money. Um, and, and, and we've obviously got problems from lockdown. So uh, that's my contribution, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Paul Hawley. Uh, Councillor McAleer, Pete, I think you raised your hands. You're on mute. Okay, I think that was a no. Um, Councillor Bell. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and thank you, Alex, for that introduction. Um, I mean, I, I, I totally agree with a lot of what uh, Councillor Crockford Hawley said. Um, I mean, I think anyone who has been around a long time and been around, around the block a few times know that there's nothing new in this um, and I think one of the big problems that we have got um, is that what we're trying to do in Western Super Mare is not unique and everybody is trying to do it so actually uh, it's a particularly difficult challenge isn't it because not only are we trying to get it right and try and reinvent ourselves in a way that doesn't repeat the mistakes and failures of the past but we're also doing it in an environment which is changing very rapidly uh, and where all towns like ours are, are trying to go through the same process. So I think it's ex extremely difficult. And I suppose the one thing I would say uh, is that I think we have to be realistic about what's going to happen and what's going to be achieved. Um, but what I do know is that by working together, we've got a better opportunity and a better chance uh, of learning the lessons and, and achieving what we want. Um, it seems to me that the two principal issues that the town council uh, would have and, and I would have as a town councillor in this situation is firstly uh, making sure that we are seen uh, as important and equal partners in the process for this place agency and this place strategy uh, for Western Super Mayor because I think as Malcolm said quite rightly in his introduction uh, we are the only elected body that represents the whole town of Western Super Mayor and we have a uniquely important voice. So I would want assurances about how we're going to manage that. Um, it seems to me that there are ways around that. I mean, I think Malcolm's quite right that the representatives to the, to the place agency board from the town council should absolutely be appointed by this council uh, at its annual meeting in the same way that we appoint all our representatives. We might choose to do something differently in the short term, but, but certainly when we get back to normality and we have our annual council in, in May next year, hopefully uh, that is exactly what I would expect. And I think the second issue is about what it means in terms of the identity and contribution that the town council has already made uh, to uh, the placemaking approach for Western Super Mayor. We might not have called it that, but actually the town council has been doing great work uh, often despite North Somerset's cutbacks and lack of intervention rather than thanks to. Uh, so uh, I think particularly about our um, tourism approach um, and visit Western Super Mare, but also the approach in terms of some of our cultural and heritage assets like the museum and the Blake Hay and others. So I think the other critical thing is to make sure that it is crystal clear to the place agency board and to North Somerset that the town council makes its own decisions about what it does with its own assets and its own resources um, and whilst we might well be supportive of the overall approach of the place agency that doesn't mean that we're going to abandon the things that we have been doing and making a success of so I would say absolutely let's be open to a conversation about how we can use our resources to the maximum effect because in the end we all want Western Supermare to succeed um, but we shouldn't be precipitously making uh, taking a view about whether one online portal is the right approach uh, or, or anything like that. Thank you, Councillor Bell. I'm scrolling across to see if there's any other speakers. Oh, hang on, we do. Uh, Councillor Peake and then Councillor yeah. Rousseau. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, Sorry, Mr I Mayor, can I speak, Helen Thornton? I've had my hand up yeah. for quite a long time. Yeah, oh, I'll, I popped I'll, backwards I'll and stand, forwards. I'll stand down. <laughs> You sure? uh, no, okay. you go ahead, Alan, but I, I've got I you just on there didn't now. think Mark could see me. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I, I fully endorse what Councillor Bell has said. Um, I think from my own point of view as being leader, um, is that basically I, I became aware of this placemaking agency one week before the 1st of July, when it, it, it all had to be up and running. And I think that 
with hindsight, um, I only wish that they'd come to the town council to give us a presentation on what they wanted. Because basically what's really happened is, is that by the 1st of July, names were already put on a piece of paper who was going to be the representatives, as Councillor Bell has pointed out. So that in itself is not democratic. But you're absolutely right that we, we need to be at the table, but at the same time, we should have been consulted, not, not after 1st of July, where here we are now, um, trying to get things sorted out. So that's all I have to say at the moment, and I'll give way now to Councillor Thornton. Am I all right speaking now? Yeah, yeah. unless we wanted an answer from uh, Alex on any of the uh, first two things, speakers or for three speakers otherwise uh we'll get so far behind i'm sure he'll miss anything that was asked of him um and then straight on to you councillor thornton if that's okay so alex would like to sure okay anything um so um i i you're absolutely right i mean the town council has done an awful lot in terms of active place making over the years and i um i absolutely recognize some of the comments about what, what North Somerset may, may have or have, has not done over the years. Um, this isn't, this isn't, uh, there's no agenda here. This is about collaboration and working together. And I think that I absolutely respect that um, uh, that you need not uh, make any decisions about any kind of asset, whether it's physical or online. Um, this is about, uh, I guess, at this stage, a commitment to to explore this, to work together, to be at the table from the beginning, and see where we can take it. Um, because uh, uh, you're quite right. After years and years and years of of uh, making um, a success of the museum, the Blake uh, Visit Western is, you know, Visit Western has a really broad set of content on there. Um, why would you uh, want to walk into an, uh, an initiative that you might or so, some people might think would threaten that and, and but I just want to give you certainly from my perspective as a as a senior officer at the council there's absolutely no agenda it is not a reflection of of any sort of uh, content or quality of anything it is simply we could do much more if if we work if we work together um, I think I mean Councillor Crockford Hawley made some really, as usual, made some very uh, salient points about, um, you know, fads of regeneration, and there are buzzwords. Um, place making is the current one, um, and it means different things to different people. But you're right; we need we need to we need to show some progress, and I think we can we can do it uh, despite current circumstances, or perhaps because of certain circumstances. We we find ourselves in we have an opportunity to get moving quite quickly and, and actually deliver some changes over over the coming year um and then uh councillor peak about your point about the way this has been or presented or introduced uh yeah absolutely um take take that feedback if if it was introduced ham-fistedly or uh, quite short term i don't, don't apologize for that this is something that's come out of um of a, of a process over the last few months and was uh, was not what that has sort of come up as an idea I suppose as a um, certainly from suggestions from uh, from uh, Mark and Mike as North Somerset councils to, to how can North Somerset Council be much more joined up with other agents uh, other organizations and agencies in the town so um, but I absolutely get that we could have introduced this in a much uh, earlier and cleaner way. Thank you, Alex. Um, Councillor Thornton. Hi, yes, um, thanks for letting me speak. Um, so I, I read Alex's, you know, very um, thorough report on this, and um, I, I do have a lot of questions on it, actually, Alex, but um, you'll be glad to know I'm not, not going to ask you them all this evening. I'll probably email you if that's all right. Um, but one of my, my biggest concerns about this is actually the board and how the board was selected because it seems to me that it has some very 
glaring omission from the board, given what the board is doing. Now, it's interesting tonight that we've had some speakers from Black Lives Matter because there are no voluntary sector or BAME groups mentioned on either your board or advisory committee or et cetera. Um, I'm a trade unionist, you know, given this, this is a business thing, an employee thing, I think the trade union should be given an opportunity uh, to have a say on this. I, the other thing that I'd be very concerned about um, is that the, the board apparently will be meeting in secret. Now, given this is about the town of Western Supermare, and we've all got an interest, you know, in making our town better, which is, you know, a great aim of this. I think, you know, uh, having a, a secretive board um, that's, you know, plotting secretly to do various things, um, I personally am not very happy about. And going back to what Councillor Bell was saying about choosing our own representative, I don't think we have to wait till May to choose our own representative. I'd like to nominate right now the leader of the council, Councillor Alan Peake, my colleague Councillor Alan, Alan Peake, to be the town council's representative at that fourth first board meeting. So as Alan says, and other people have said here, um, we will be um, in this, uh, you know, from the beginning. But I would also like to suggest that we do um, uh, defer actually voting on, the, on agreeing to any of this, particularly given our concerns about the visit Western, until we've got a lot more information um, and we could defer it till our September meeting. Again, as my colleague Alan has said, you see, this has really been, um, well, certainly I feel the same as Alan, it's really been sprung on me, this. Thank you. Is that, uh, have you made a proposition in terms of I'm not sure which is your proposition. Is it having Alan yeah, Peake so as a representative I, I, I suppose or I've got, per, per, delaying it? Yeah, I, 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 I think we need to delay um, the, uh, you know, actually agreeing to take part in this. You know, that we know that we're uh, very supportive of it, but that we, we actually need further information and that uh, we also defer our representative appointing our representative till the september meeting although my preference would be that it be alan um right councillor rousset the council represents on this board what i am impressed with is the, the members that have already been selected on the board the enterprise north somerset enterprise agency the western chamber of commerce the western business improvement district um, town centre partnership, etc. Um, and I would like to go back, and um, because of that, I think it is so important that if this is going to work at all, that we are the place that businesses will want to come to. And um, I know that when I was on North Somerset Council for that short time, um, one of the things was attracting businesses into Western so that people and the employment to those businesses came from the Western Town Council area. And we had um, Western Enterprise Board, what uh, Enterprise Zone, what happened there? It was a flop, it didn't happen. And you look down the road at Bridgewater and they were flooding into Bridgewater. And what I would sincerely ask is that they go back and look, what was it we were doing wrong? How did we fail to represent ourselves to the businesses that at that time, and I know things are going to be a bit weak at the moment and probably for several years, but somehow we've got to make sure that as the enterprise place for businesses to come to, we're doing lots of house building, we have got to be number one. And I would, I would like Alex to explain if he's got any analysis at all what went wrong last time? Not today, but at some stage. Yeah, I think that's a difficult one to ask because I think some of us would say it was probably political, Councillor Rousseau, in many ways. So I think it's a question you can probably legitimate, legitimately ask him by email. But if we get into a debate around why things failed in the past, I'm sure many of us might have a view. Um, but it's a fair question, and, and I think that that could probably be picked up. Uh, so. Uh, Councillor Crewe. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I think we should uh, welcome the report. I've been studying it now for the last three weeks with officers on the way forward and see how we can get involved in help. The one good thing I see coming out of this is the problem that the town council has had over the last two or three years is the reluctance of organisations to make use of our website. They want to create their own, including North Somerset. And the failure of North Somerset to give a detailed advance notice of any events. They use the excuse that it needed to be kept to the last minute before it could be advertised. If we can change that, that's a big step forward that we need to do. There are two or three things in the report, Mr. Mayor, that uh, need, I believe, a second look at, but that's for North Somerset meeting, not for this one. But I think in general, I, I support the, uh, the way forward with the report, and I think we need to look at it in a lot more detail. As I say, I've already been discussing it with, uh, with members of the, our officers, and I think there is some, some good points to be made and a good starting point. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Councillor Willis, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Councillor Willis, if I hang on a second, because you're on the list, so I'll come back to you. But I'm sure, as, as it says, who's, yeah, I've got one hand up now. Right. Sorry, Councillor Crawford Hawley was in. Uh, Councillor Says, will you also have your hand up? Okay, I think it was you next then, because I did see someone pop their hand up while I was cracking across the screen. So you carry on now. Hi, oh, yeah, um, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I welcome this and I welcome regeneration, but I feel as a young person and as a uh, single mum of this town, um, and I re represent them and, and SEM parents, um, I feel like our voice is lost. So I welcome this with open arms, but we talk about the people and getting their views and stuff, but I look at this list of boards and I'm like, how, how are we going to invite that and our views to that kind of board of people and that's what I really am struggling with um because yeah. it just seems to be you know chamber of commerce great at the bid like there's a lot of small businesses that cannot afford to go on the bid so how are those really minute businesses that equally add to western's um, economic growth are going to be able to to very muchly contribute to what's needed for western so that's that's kind of my concerns is, is, is the youth of Western and very small businesses, how, how are we going to be heard? Okay, uh, I'll let Alex come in in a second, but the, uh, I think uh, Town Clerk circulated the full report from North Somerset, and I don't know how many of you have access to this now, but on page 17 of that report, um, it, the membership, uh, I think the report, we need to be very clear about how this, uh, this, this setup works, and I won't get too involved, um, but is the board itself you don't want to get fixated on because that is simply a facilitator. That's not where the advice comes, that's not where the guidance comes. That comes from the advisory board which is much bigger and will be advising and helping set the agenda. The board of uh, 10 or 12 people is simply the ones who are going to be responsible for the legalities and to make sure the projects are delivered as the advisory group asks that's and and just for those questions you just asked and alex will jump in in a moment that does include the advisory boards etc do include community groups um as business other business networks and workspaces uh and uh, so uh, the ccg the civic society town councillors uh so th there are lots of other uh, arts england uh, uh yeah arts england and Stocking. So in that report, it shows the huge gathering of skills it's trying to bring together, and they'll be the ones who will be advising into the board what's required, what's needed, and what's involved. And I think Alex has actually said at a previous meeting where this was suggested that um, we will be looking at engaging with unions as well on those boards and other suggested groups. So, Alex, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's some really valid challenges just raised, and um I, I in a in a in a sense they they themselves reflect the challenge we face which is that there are an awful lot of interest western is a large town large towns come with a lot of interest groups a lot of opinions some of them are some are some groups are very formal and organized and institutional some of them less so so it may, it may well be that the board has proposed, it's not quite right, um, and 
um, and maybe there's an opportunity to uh, to look at that. But it's how do we define or identify a group of individuals who will administer effectively administer this thing? Not, you know, they are they are a board to to facilitate and administer it without it being so big uh, that it's difficult difficult to do that. So I think. Um, I think it's it, it's important to look at the the potential power and um, energy that sits within the advisory group, which could be limitless in membership. Really, anyone who's anyone who's got something to say about Western um, could be, could be in that, and there's no li there's no limits to that really. Um, uh, and that's where the real breadth of interest, whether it's external investors like Historic England or Arts Council England or um, any particular business or community group um, uh, could participate there. I, I, the, 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 the challenge about the diversity on the board is sound and actually um, myself and Angela Hicks who uh, to begin with were proposing to, to be the, chair, the independent chair of this board are actively discussing that and trying to find ways of making it more representative without making it too big um, and that that's the challenge we face but um, if there are um, if there are views that it's it's for example it's too white uh, it, I mean it is too white it's 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 all white I mean there's a there's a reasonable balance of men and women on the group um, but not so much in in other respects um, and 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 it's it, either we we could have another look at the board, or we absolutely invite anyone who wants to be involved in the advisory group to be to be involved in that. And perhaps what we could do also is that we, we we're calling the board something to initiate this thing, get it moving, get, make a start, and then uh, to, uh, uh, and then we can um, start to address some of these issues. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Willis on the telephone. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, firstly, I um, don't think there is any need to delay this paper until any later time of September or any other time. Uh, the Town Council's commitment is to this paper and to its detail, so delaying it won't stop anything and it won't help anything. So I'm, I'm against delaying anything, so I think we need to, to carry forward as to the details that are in there. The finer minute detail can be sorted out as it goes along, as you have already said. And as for the board members, that, that can be sorted out as it goes. It, there's no reason not to. It doesn't happen to have to be written in stone now. And, and in, in Western Supermare, we are extremely fortunate. I have said it many, many times over many years. We do our partnerships and our equalities very well with our groups. We have the the VMA Forum, we have the uh, Multicultural Friendship Association, we have the LGBT Forum, we have the Malaya Lee Association. All of these people not, are all retired. A lot of them work in the town in our care sector, especially the Malaya Lees, they're in our care sector. They have a huge voice and our Bangladeshi Association as well. Some of our ladies in the Bangladeshi Bangladeshi Ladies Association, which has just started up, um, are working in the care sector. So we, we've got our fingers on the pulse as the town council, as you know, Mr. Mayor, for the amount of um, engagements that come in from all of these groups, we already know who they are, and it is very easy for them to slot in and out for different parts of what is needed for this programme as to when it happens and to feed into it. Um, so I'm fully supportive of it, and I'm not supportive of delaying anything. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Now, I've, I think I've got uh, Councillor Crockford Hawley is the last speaker. If anybody else wants to speak, if they can put their hand up. But on you, Councillor Crockford Hawley. Um, uh, th thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I, I think it's got to it's got to go ahead. It would be terribly easy to delay matters in in, in that good local government way for a, a further chat. Um, um, I don't think we should be doing that. But uh, but I think Helen and and Ellie raise very important points, and I, I don't think they should be in any way be 
discounted or brushed under the under the carpet. Um, I, I have I have a well, fear is a strong word, but when when the town council puts one person onto onto this board, I think we need to know exactly how that person is going to discuss all of these matters with the town councillors. Because so often in the past, you nominate a person onto a, an, another organisation, and that's the last you hear from that person. Um, mm -hmm. That person is not going onto the board in order to do his or her job. He or she is going there to do our job. And therefore, we will instruct that person uh, as to how that person will respond. And if you don't like the way that person is carrying out our then we get rid of that person. It's as simple as that. So we have got to be in complete charge of the person who goes on as our representative. Um, and that raises an issue. I have no objection to, to the name Councillor Porter, but would, would you be kind enough, Mr Mayor, to tell me how his name appeared. Okay, yes, if you're asking me the question. Um, so uh, initially, it's simply that the, uh, the Councillor Porter's name appeared because Councillor Porter has been responsible and leading an engagement group with business over the last, uh, I think it was about 18 months, 12 months possibly. Ian, you correct me if you want a quick, I'll let you speak in a sec. Um, and, and so it seemed sensible just to bring this group together in the first instance to have Ian on that group so it would keep the whole system moving. So we didn't, because Ian does have good contacts in terms of those businesses. Um, and, and in fairness, and as the executive member for business and economy on North Somerset, I wasn't invited into that group until well into its operations and work. So it is a case of trying to bring it together. And that is the only reason Ian finds himself immediately put on that list, because he found himself round the table with those businesses when we tried to launch this. Now, I agree with you entirely. And I'll let, uh, I'll let Ian speak in this sec. If the council felt that that wasn't the right appointment later uh, next year, um, when it comes to its round of uh, dealing with outside bodies, well, the council will decide. Um, and, I, I, and I'm sure other, pe and other members might want to put their names forward. Um, but that's how we generally do the process. But most people on this board were selected to what they brought to the table currently. And I think Councillor Croft Hawley uh, is very right that if you don't bring anything to the table, then really you don't need to be on the board because you will be challenged to do things and you will be challenged to make things happen because that's how we're going to change the, 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 the cake at the end of the process. If we keep shoving in the same ingredients, we're going to keep getting out the same cake. So unless we change things, uh, we won't see any changes. Uh, Ian, would you like, uh, Ian, uh, Councillor Porter, would you like to just comment on the reason you might find yourself where you are? Did um, John want to come back first of all? Let, let John just come back because he had his hand up first, Mark, and I'll, I'll answer some of that after, all right? Okay, Councillor Crockford Hawley then. Yes, Jeff. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't wish to make any personal comments, but I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Um, the more you got into that uh, that analysis of how these people were appointed, the more I found it unacceptable. I'm sorry, Mark. Um, I, I just don't understand how, I mean, who was it who sat down and thought, now then, these are the right people we want. I mean, I'm looking through that list of 15 names. Well, they've all been there before, every one of them. Um, and, and again, you know, they're pretty good people, but somebody somewhere has, has chosen them. I haven't. Who has? Right. Um, Alex, you might better help with that one because you had discussions with the... I mean, I think, again, it's important to say that the reason we went for an independent chair is to take all of these decisions at the setting up of this stage out of politicians' hands who tend to muck most things up anyway. So... Um... So there's been, as, as, uh, as the mayor has said, there's been a group um, meeting for some time, uh, a, a business group um, created by Councillor Porter, um, and that was a, a, a valuable network of, of interests in the town, 
very much uh, saying similar things about the need to collaborate and it seemed like literally a good place to start to create a discussion about this. Um, we um, met as a couple of groups. That, by the way, the board doesn't exist yet. All we're doing is proposing at the moment, all that's happened is a board has been proposed. The board has not formally met or anything. A group of a group of interests, including those that have met for some time, uh, uh, reporting to Council Hills around around the interest of business, got together to discuss that this could be a better way to collaborate across the town, and has suggested an initial an initial collection of people who could form that board. But the board has not met. It's not met yet. Thank you, Alex. Um, Councillor Gibbons. Thank you. Um, I was just thinking that the way, the language that's employed in describing this um, place agency where you have this board and then you have the advisory board and you have the project groups, um, if we are to really be reassured that the real work is going to be with the advisory board, then why don't we change the language and call what you're proposing to be the board, I don't know, the trustees, and the advisory board is the board or the executive on it, so that people understand that that's where the real work is going to happen. Because otherwise I don't feel reassured about the role of community groups or of any other um, interest groups like the unions being involved in that. It, the impression you get at the moment is that the advisory board is secondary to this board that we are all discussing and wondering about how it's constituted and how we've chosen the people on it and it, we all seem to have a lot of concerns about. So I suppose I'm questioning whether we need to look again at the structure of this agency. I don't feel an enormous amount of confidence about the inclusivity and the real involvement of community groups and other special interest groups in the advisory side of it. So that's my comment. Is there any way that we can um, change the language or even rejig the, the structure so that people like Ella said, you know, feel that young people, people with special needs, uh, ethnic groups are going to get represented? I, I, Alex, you'd like to comment? Um, no, I think, again, that's a really valid challenge and we could definitely um, uh, we could definitely go away and look at the, the terminology and the terms of reference of those groups. In terms of the structure, again, we can, we can definitely take another look at that. However, I think if we, there's still, in order to administer something, which could be driven by, by a very large um, collection of um, organisations and energies within what we're currently saying is the advisory group, it will, will, I think what we'll find is it will still need something that is smaller to administer this as a device. Um, but we can definitely go away and have another look at that. Okay. We could be going back to the days of the town trustees, Catherine. Funny you should say that. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Councillor Bell, you're next on the list. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was just going to try and put forward an alternative or a slight an amendment, slight tweak to Councillor Thornton's proposal in, in the interest of actually moving us on, because I think we are in danger of um, trying to get into the detail of, of how it might work um, when I'm not sure that we're at that stage in the whole process. Um, uh, and, I, and I totally agree with lots of the comments that have been made. I mean, Alex will know that um, the comment about it being dominated by the usual suspects is something that I've certainly regularly made and I, and I totally agree with Councillor Sace and Councillor Crockford Hawley on, on that front. Uh, I, you know, I, do, I do struggle to understand how you're going to get new, a new bold approach um, from the same people. But, um, but anyway, uh, that, not that, not, you know, putting that to one side, I think in principle it's a good idea. You know, do we want to work together? Yes, we do. Uh, do we think the town council has got a positive contribution, an important and crucial, crucial con contribution to make? Yes, we do. Um, uh, and so it seems to me that we absolutely want to be sat around the table. So I think the argument is about, you know, exactly what that looks like. 
my suggestion would be taking on board um, Councillor Thornton's uh, initial point would be that we appoint um, Councillor uh, Peak and Councillor Porter as our nominees to the board through until uh, the annual council meeting in May. Um, the reason for that being that Councillor Peak is clearly the leader of the town council and is best placed to play that coordinating and representative role for us. Councillor Porter has been involved, rightly or wrongly, it doesn't really matter how he got there, does it? He has been involved in those formative com conversations and I think it's helpful um, to have uh, a bit of continuity as we move forward and he's clearly done a lot of really good work uh, in terms of building relationships uh, with the business community that will be really useful as part of the conversation and that, that we then invite them to participate in the process going forward and come back with a further report uh, in the autumn when there's been more progress in terms of the development of the plan and what it looks like so that we can then start to get into some of those detailed issues that I think members have quite rightly raised. Uh, if you read the full report, that dynamic between the advisory board, uh, the advisory group and the main board probably isn't very clear. And I think that does need to be clarified so that we capture that bigger uh, range of experience. I think there does need to be more definition around exactly what the purpose of the place making uh, place agency and place agency board is going to be. I think that's quite clear. The town council is not going to be in the space of committing funds or committing our own resources uh, until we get that clarity. Um, but I think we also need to recognise that everybody has to start somewhere. You obviously have to invite some people to participate and to have some initial discussions so that you start to move forward. Uh, and I think it's really encouraging that Councillor Porter and the town clerk have been part of that conversation. Uh, and that we're now here at an early stage before all of this has been uh, set in train uh, to, to have our opportunity for influence. And I'm sure that Alex and indeed the mayor in his uh, other role um, will have been listening intently to the things that people said. So my suggestion would be we appoint the two uh, elected members through until May and we invite them to come back with a further report um, outlining the progress and any recommendations that might flow from that um, in the autumn. Okay, does that find find a seconder? Yeah, I second is that, that. Is that, is that Councillor Porter, were you seconding or do you want to speak? You're on, you're on mute, but I do have, if you want to speak, I've got Councillor Thornton first and then on to you in order. Okay, go on then. Okay, Councillor Thornton. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, a good suggestion of mine because actually it's not that dissimilar from my original suggestion if we appoint our representatives now they attend the first board meeting and they feed back further information to us at our September meeting I suppose the only thing I would add is that we don't actually um, sign ourselves up to anything controversial right now yeah. because I know there are for instance some concerns around us giving up the Visit Western website so but other than that i would be happy with that okay fine uh and councillor porter thank you uh, mr mayor um just going back right to the beginning when uh, councillor crockford hawley was uh, mentioning about uh, you know um the town council being involved in the town this has come from the strategy that was put together at the beginning of um last year um, because the town council was never involved with the business community as, as such within uh, within the town council. So my objective in the first place was no more than bringing the business together in the town, as Councillor Bell has said, and getting everybody around the table just to see um, the ideas that they could come forward with. Uh, and, and, you know, the, there is some really good, keen people within the town that want Western to happen. Uh, and the fact is, is that it, it's been so disjointed for so long and the town council has never been involved in uh, that development of um, business within the town. So we did put the strategy together for this year, uh, based on, the, on the, the, you know, the meeting that we've held, or the meetings that we've held, uh, and you've been involved with that, Mark, over the time, um, uh, and it is really, really positive. So um, when this um, opportunity came up, um, when Alex and yourself and other people came around the table, it fitted quite nicely into that agenda. So a lot of the work's already been done about creating uh, the people that we need um, to make things happen. Um, there is other people around, uh, and as 
quite rightly you say the advisory board could be made up of anybody it's charities it's whatever it, it wants to be you know but there is a bigger there is a bigger project here so we're not talking about a small project we're talking about a, a bigger project across the whole of weston um that could make a massive difference um to everybody so i i i thank to the bell and others um, who um, have seen the work that has gone on uh, and I certainly will uh, pursue it because I have got good contacts and I will be representing the college as well on this board so at the end of the day like it, it's purely the fact that um, I assume that um, Peak, uh, Councillor Peak will be replacing um, uh, the, the clerk on, on the committee or whatever it is but quite rightly we do not need a talking shop of about 20 or 30 people. It just will not work. You know, the thing is, is that we want to get it moving. I'm quite happy to help and get it moving, but um, you know, we haven't got time to wait. People want help and support now. They don't want help and support um, at Christmas or in the new year. They want help now. So let's get on into it and let's move forward with it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Porter. Um, I, I, undoubtedly, uh, I mean, I'll speak to Alex about um, the membership of that board i think he and i have heard everything that's been said so we have a proposal on the table which has been proposed by councillor bell um and seconded by councillor clayton to have councillor peak the leader of the council and councillor porter as two nominations uh, to sit on this uh board or whatever we call it trustees in the in the first instance to the next agm um just to try and get this project off the floor do we uh do we have any further amendments or is, is that uh malcolm are we happy with that proposal yes and I, I understand there's a general feeling that you also want a further report at the september council meeting which we are hoping to hold physically if, um in the new council chamber it's been provisionally booked if we're allowed to but it, uh, council the original proposition did say a report back so is that included please I, I would like that included and and okay. I, we don't need to specify a date but I think in the autumn as long as there is a report back when it's appropriate I think that would be helpful and just to take on board um, Councillor Thornton, Thornton's point I think it would be good to just make clear that we are not making any commitments beyond that at, at this stage until we've had that further report so just to give that reassurance but we are not looking to throw into the mix anything else at this point. No, nope. fine. Um, and if you're happy to take that on. If, if, if this is going to be such a high powered organisation as uh, certainly as I hope it will be, then it will wish to make a report to every successive meeting of Western Town Council. We will expect I imagine, a report I would expect it's, every meeting. I would expect it's, um, its representatives would do that. I certainly hope they would, because that's what we should be doing as councillors. Um, and Councillor Clayton, are you happy to take those uh, amendments on board as your seconder? Yeah. Yes, yeah, I okay. am. Yeah. So, um, how are we going to show the vote? Are we showing votes first for or against? And uh, so, if everyone can hold their hands up, those in favour of the amendment and the proposition. Councillor Willis. Councillor Willis, you're for it. Okay, we'll add that one. Thank you. Four. Thank you. Seven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, fifteen, twenty. Twenty. I made it twenty three. Twenty two. Nope. 23, I think that's right. 28. 23. No, no it's, 20, more. it's more. That's 28 because you've got Councillor Willis as well. Sorry. So I'll just keep your hands up once more and I'll just go back through. It's clearly carried, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> it is. It is very You could just take a screenshot. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, we've got an extra vote just sneaking in. There's, there's a way of getting a vote in. There you go. <laughs> Okay, so it's, 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 if, uh, if anyone wants to against. record a vote against, otherwise I can't see a vote against, it is clearly carried. Okay, okay. thank you, that's, that's carried. And thank you, Alex, for giving up your evening for us this evening. 
Thank you for having me. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, moving on to the next agenda item. Um, uh, so, uh, receive a report from the Youth Council, which is attached on item five. I don't believe there's anyone here from the Youth Council, Mr. Mayor, unless the um, one of the councillors has anything to say. It's just for information. Okay, so, um, Councillor Codling, Councillor Codling's on the Youth Council. Yeah, carry on. Yeah. You're waving there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just, just to say that the Youth Council have been battling on valiantly via Zoom, like many of us as well. Um, usual fluctuation in numbers, so if I can do my standard appeal for, for members to try to encourage any young people and any organisations to um, signpost people to the Youth Council. The YMCA are doing um, a really fantastic job getting involved in all sorts of things to help our young people and their families at this time. And they, they always thank us for, for, for our support for them. Councillor Codling, can I ask, do we engage with the schools directly? Because when we had the climate emergency um, protests outside the town hall last year, or was it earlier this year, or last year I think it was, uh, there were some students there who go to, they went to, uh, or I remember it was Wyvern School, it's now, um, Terence, no, oh, one off the one off uh, the dual carriageway coming Hans in. Price. Hans Price. Hans thank Price. you. Thank you. Thank Good you. heavens, um, Mr. Mayor, you went there. Um. It, was Wyvern. it was Wyvern then, and it didn't look as nice as it does now. Um, however, they, they said they hadn't had any engagement, mm. and I wonder how we do reach out to them. Mm. To yeah, join, it's, it... yeah I, I, and I think that's a periodic problem. I, I think we sort of go, it's, it's quite cyclical, so there'll be a certain burst of engagement, and then those pupils have actually left the school um, within a few years. So it's something they know they've got to do time and again. They've just signed off their latest e-zine. So that will be coming out. They've, they, they've put quite a lot of work into bolstering their Instagram account um, and that will be going directly through to schools um, and they'll be exploring other ways to do that as well. Thank you. Is there any further questions from anyone else? And I'm assuming the report is to be noted. Yes. Thank, yes Mr. Thank, you. thank you very much. Um, now we have a set of financial reports, which I'm sure Sarah will speak to briefly, but I believe we have to, other than the approve the financial reports item nine, I'm assuming we have to approve every single one individually, uh, as it is procedure in terms of financial regulations. Sarah, would you uh, like to speak to them at all? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So the first one is your earmark reserve report, um, which is your agenda item six. Um, that report wasn't actually showing on my pack, so I don't know whether it is showing on, on members' packs. It's an earmark reserve report. Um, it's the final report from the one that was already submitted to Council before the close of last year, and it just makes the alterations at the year end point. So the intended total earmark reserves for the year are 343, 399. And the most um, notable change to the previous report sent to you was the receipt of SIL monies, um, which came in just before the close of the end of last year, 31st of March, to a value of £104,601. And there was also the addition of the extra um, from the resolution made about the civic monies of £5,571. So it's earmarked reserves at the end of 31st of March 2020 of 343399. That's what I would need approved, please, Mr Mayor. Okay. Uh, I, I'm assuming there's no questions, unless there are any questions regarding that money, but it is reserves. So uh, how, do we, how do we vote on this? Do you vote in favour of the reserves or... You need to approve that they're appropriate. You need to approve that they're a correct record. Yeah. Okay. Th uh, those in favour that this is a correct record, please show. Councillor Willis. Thank you. Twenty-four four. Any against? Any not happy with that record? Yes. Carried. Carried, thank you. 
Okay, on to item seven. So, Mr Mayor, item seven is your um, final internal audit report for the year. So this is the report that we received at timely intervals. We have a one report every quarter on average for the whole of the council's activities. This is to provide council um, acknowledgements that you have all the governance systems you have in place, your standing orders, financial regs, your policies and procedures are being adhered to. So this is to provide assurance to you. And I'm pleased to report that that was a, a whole year of a completely clean audit report, which is, which is good. Excellent. Well, thank you for that and thank the team for a clean audit report. So if we can have a vote to any questions first. And then we've got a buzz somewhere. hope it's not me. And then uh, all those in favour to accept that report, accept that audit. Councillor Willis. Thank you, Councillor Willis. I think that's carried, Mr Mayor. Uh, that's carried. Yeah, easily. Thank you. Um, item eight then end of year accounts so these are your formal accounts they are um set out in a b c and d on your agenda and you will need to go through them in that order oh, indeed. and in order yes thank and, you and recommend them um making As I... yeah um there is a paper in your audit pack which there is nine questions on the governance statement within the agar that the council do have to formally adopt so you must bring that to your attention mr mayor that that does need to be looked into um just scrolling through the pack myself now to find the page for you it is on page number four 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 of the annual governance statement the agar and there's four questions and you as a council have to answer formally yes or no to those nine questions, please. With the exception of number nine, actually, because we don't have any trusts. So that would be not applicable. But Sarah, presumably you have a recommendation for each of the questions. Yes, um, but well, I, I can't formally recommend because the council has to acknowledge it themselves, but based on the internal audit reports and the reporting systems that have come up through policy and finance, um, as your Deputy Town Clerk and RFO, I have nothing to bring to your attention. Um, you've had all the information throughout the year, but you do have to formally, as a council, recognise those questions. And, and, but I see no reason, unless you do, Malcolm, why they, it should be quite straightforward for approval of all nine. Okay, but we've got to go through each individual A, B, C, D and E separately, I believe, Sarah. Yes, please, yeah. Yes, so... So I'm just going to take a vote on each. So for a require for us to approve those statements. So statement 8A, those in favour? I'll abstain, um, uh, Mr Mayor, okay. because I can't see anything. I don't okay. know what I'm seeing, so. We, we're clearly carried. Um, I assume Councillor Willis, that will be the same for all of them, so... It will have to be, unfortunately, okay. I, I can't see anything, so... Okay. I don't know what I'm uh, looking at. <laughs> you, uh, you, have you got your papers? I have, but I can't find it in the papers at all, because page four isn't corresponding with anything. And I've gone backwards right, okay. and forwards, unfortunately. Um, 8B then, please, Councillors, uh, approve that statement. Those that in favour? That one is the that one is the questions, Mr. Mayor. So you will need that to. That is the questions. Yeah, you will need to identify that you answer yes to all those government questions, please. And we can do all nine at the same time. Yeah. Unless so, you felt otherwise, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, councillors, unless any of you uh, would like to say no to any of those nine questions, uh, please, if you can voice that now, and then otherwise we'll vote on all nine questions on a block. Sorry, Chairman, I was muted. Someone muted me. I heard nothing then. Okay, so we are... What well, you were saying. All, all it was is that we the, the questions for the annual return need to be answered. There's nine questions, so we either answer them yes or no. We ideally want them to be yes, as long as we're happy with the accounts as they have been done and the, the audit as it has been done. If you feel you need to say no to any of those questions, um, I would like you to voice that now. Um, and then if we don't have any no's to that question, we will vote on all nine questions on block. 
Thank you. So if there's anyone who feels they cannot vote for the audit questions. So then I'm voting all, on block, all nine questions, please. Uh, those in favor of the, the, the uh, yes is a correct record. Please go. That's clearly carried. All right. Thank you. Uh, item 8C, sign and date, annual return. Um, that's a straightforward. Are we happy for that to be done? Those in favour? Councillor Willis, four. Thank you. Again, clearly carried, Dan Clark. Thank you. Um, and item 8D, receive the notes and accompanying the statement of accounts. Um, does that have to be voted on, Sarah? No, not it's even just audited. you to note. It's not normal. About to say. It's, yeah, that has to be voted on. Okay. Thank you. And so then I think item nine, which is uh, to approve our January reports, they can all be done on block. Um, if Unless there's any questions for Sarah over item nine the, and the January to March's financial reports. Mr. Mayor, can I just say this is a summarised version because there's several months worth. So yep. they are slightly condensed from what used to go to Policy and Finance Committee. Um, if any councillor, we really welcome any scrutiny from any councillor. So if any councillor wants more detailed information on a particular month or a particular management account, please uh, feel free to request that. I'm sorry to give Sarah possibly some extra work, but we really welcome that scrutiny from members. Okay, thank you. So even after the meeting, if there's any questions on any of those items, please approach Sarah with those. So all those in favour to, to accept, approve those uh, from January to March. Show please. Thank you, Councillor Lewis. I think that's a clearly, clearly carried. Thank you, everybody. So, um, item 10. Uh, so, CCTV upgrades and procurement. Uh, are you speaking to this, Malcolm? Um, I think it's actually um, the Deputy Town Clerk's report. So, uh, probably I'm aware of it, but I'd invite her to. Okay, Sarah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So um, this is just carrying on from the agreement made by Town Council to upgrade the CCTV. Um, your previous um, resolution was to appoint the contractor select to carry out the works as per the tender that you received. Um, what was discussed in the um, procurement stage was the need for looking into and having costings provided to the Town Council for any upgrades to cameras as was necessary and most importantly to have a cost for the mobile CCTV unit. Um, I've been to all of those meetings with, um, as you asked for, um, we're doing the procurement alongside Paul Morris and um, Chris Harrison in the CCTV department. And we've, we've gone through that process now. There's a list been sent out with the agenda of the additional comments. Now, Malcolm and I met with the police and the team at North Somerset back in November. Yeah where we identified some problem areas and we took back information from feedback from councillors on places like Castle Batch where cameras weren't working and um, other areas like that. And that has all been addressed with this procurement and the suggested upgrades are, have taken on board all the comments that have certainly been fed up to Malcolm and myself to take back to North Somerset Council. So the report in front of you gives you details of the suggested upgrades which the the team feel would really enhance the cctv for western um, it's not included in the original purchase that you've already approved so this is in addition to that as detailed in my report um, and the recommendations are there so happy to answer any questions um, as long as they're not too technical in regard to the actual cctv or that i can feed those back um, council crew also sat in with me for the last part of this procurement with um, Councillor um, Bailey and also Councillor McAleer had an interest but unfortunately we couldn't coordinate all three councillors at one meeting so Councillor Crew would be able to help with any questions as well. Um, Mr Mayor can I just add draw attention to the part in the Deputy Town Clerk's report so 
um, you can afford to do all of the um, upgrades and additions that were circulated and you'd have a couple of thousand pounds left out of the hundred thousand so it's it's pretty much up to the budget but I believe is within it of course on, alternatively you can decide that there's some you don't want and um, save some of the money okay anyone I'm going through the screen if you want to speak please show okay can okay. Plin Oh, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm just wondering if, and Malcolm just said, if there's any we don't want, if there's any on this list that we did want, and um, having spoken with police and residents, there's a few areas in my ward, for example, um, especially around the parks and, and near the shopping kind of areas. Is there, who, where do we go to discuss new cameras as opposed to the new Thanks. Sarah? Uh, Sarah. Yeah, so um, the CCTV, as I understand it, is you have to go through quite a process to actually install CCTV. You can't just put it based on a residential want. It has to meet certain criteria, and that's assessed by um, Howard Pothakay and his team at North Somerset. So it's about how many crimes have been committed. Um, you have to, yeah, it's quite a legal process in where you can and can't put CCTV. So that would be have to be done. We could we could put a proposal through to them from um, the town council for them to look into, but it would need to go through that process. We couldn't just say we're going to buy another camera and you would need to put it up. It does have to follow a, a process. So my suggestion would be to put anything in writing up to the town clerk and then we would forward it on to the CCTV team for consideration. But of course, any additional cameras will incur an extra cost again. And we would also need to consider whether there is infrastructure in the places you are wanting to put the CCTV cameras in terms of the um, transmission back to the CCTV room is my understanding. Okay, thank you. Councillor Fox. Councillor Fox, you're on mute if you're speaking. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can now. Uh, can you hear me? All yes, right, okay. we can. Um, yeah, the question I've got is regarding the... I'm uh, not fitting a camera at the bottom of Ashcombe Park, Milton Road. I would have thought that was an ideal place. Uh, in what way does it not meet the criteria? Would you like me to respond, Mr. Mayor? Yes, please. Yeah, so um, we, this was one we actually discussed when Councillor Crew was at the meeting with me, so I'm, he may be able to enlighten more. Um, but that one was looked into and there wasn't enough crime committed in that area to warrant a CCTV camera, reported crime and crime that had gone into the police system. So that was the reasons we were told that there wasn't enough um, reason to have a CCTV camera installed at the bottom of Ashton Park. Well, I thought the idea of camera was to prevent crime. Uh, uh, yeah, in terms of um, cameras, yeah, Councillor Fox, uh, cameras, Councillor uh, the, Fox. Uh, the process is that we have to look at different ways of preventing that crime before we start using CCTV, so it could be improved lighting, it could be extra uh, uh, police involvement, it could be just going through the park once in the evening to move crowds on, but the idea of just popping a camera in there because there's a bit of antisocial behaviour um, especially if those antisocial behaviours haven't been recorded as crime or uh, recorded to the police and it's just that local members are aware of it. The problem with that, of course, when officers start looking at the statistics around uh, reports, if, if it is just local member knowledge, they don't have those stats. And because they don't have those stats, they can't therefore recommend a, a placement of a camera. So if there are particular problems in the bottom of Ashcan Park, um, I know there were several years ago, but I wasn't aware of them currently, um, then we need to make sure we report those. Uh, Councillor Rousset. Councillor Rousset. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Rousset, are you on mute? Councillor Rousset is on mute. Did you want to speak? You're still on mute. Hello. Uh, uh, go on. Okay, carry on. Okay. Um, there's, there's one and they were in um, additional cameras proposed, but um, not in priority order. The one that says Queensway, well, 
I wondered where there was an, uh, a location for that, or is that just an upgrade to Castle Bath? Sarah? Have the answers. Yes, Sarah, or as Councillor Krug got Sarah, you're Sarah. muted. You're still muted, Sarah. So I was on a different screen, I clicked the wrong button. Um, I'll let Councillor Crew answer that. He's waving frantically. Um, he's had a lot of involvement in this particular camera, I believe. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Crew. This is an additional camera. It was decided that uh, it's been quite dangerous on the corner near the school. Uh, and there's been a lot of problems with, ran by the bus stops, a lot of problems with hooligans and so on. So that's why that camera has been installed. That is a completely new camera to anything else. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make the point that oh, sorry. the advantage on this new cameras is within the, the agreement we have, is that unlike previously, we've got guarantees that these will be serviced and cleaned every six months. We have the option to change cameras to 180 degrees. But the most important thing is to pick up members that believe there should be a camera. Currently, the law states quite clearly where you can put a camera, and North Somerset's been through this in quite minute detail with the police. And at the moment, the areas that mentioned do not qualify. However, if there's ongoing problems, we've agreed that a mobile camera can be put in that location. And if that proves to be a big problem and there is recordings of problems, then that would open the way to put a more permanent camera there. The other benefit with these is the police, who were at the meeting when we agreed this from the technical pods of the police, are developing a system where they can tap in to the CCTV system rather than have to come to the town hall to pick up a disc, as happens today. This new system, they were so impressed with the one we've chosen, they've made the North Somerset the gold standard and all other local authorities they're talking to, they're going to be saying, if you want us to be involved in being able to take images direct, you have to use this system. So it's, uh, it's one up for us, Mr. Mayor. It is. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, and uh, oh. Councillor Ustage just wanted to come back and then Councillor Bailey. Yeah, um, I do, just to reassure other councillors, um, I'm very impressed, I'm very appreciative that the camera is going in there in Queensway. And just looking at the crimes recorded May 2020, just to give you some idea, there were 39 antisocial behaviours and 55 violent crimes, hmm. which is quite a huge, and one doesn't always associate that with world as well. Such a lovely area. Yeah, sadly, more and more, isn't it, currently? Um, Councillor Bailey. Oh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Oh, you can hear me, Greg. Um, yes. Yep. I've um, just got a few points. Um, um, Councillor Crew mentioned about a mobile camera. I thought we were having two effectively mobile cameras. Um, perhaps you confirmed that. But um, can I, can you give, can someone give me an overview of the timetable? I know we've approved this expense and we're itemising, we're getting down to individual cameras, but what are we talking about? Are we talking about December? When are we going to be implementing? I know it's the control centre who needs to be revamped as well. Over to you. Uh, shall I answer that, Peter, or do you want to start on that? I'll start, Chair. I'll start, to Mr Mayor. I'm Chairman of the Community uh, Safety Group on North Somerset. We've got a meeting coming up on this to plan when everything will be in place. Uh, so that's that's coming up next week. Everything is underway. They're starting to install cameras very shortly. Uh, and most of the cameras in Weston will be the first to be done. Uh, hopefully, <clears throat> Portishead will be last because they were awkward about it. No, the four towns are now all in place. Differences with us, because we're connected to the town hall, all the cameras are put in place are being put in a situation where they're all transmitted through camera by camera to the roof of the technical college because that means it, that we don't pay any line rent for. The other three towns are having to have different systems in place which links into Castlewood so it's, it's more costly for them 
and therefore takes longer to put in place. Ours really is just a case of installing the cameras on the post, making sure they have line of sight for the next camera. And as long as one of those cameras can see the area on the top of the, uh, the college, then they will work through the system immediately with no transmission cost, no transmission delays. So that does make it much quicker. I will say at the okay, end, so Mr. Mayor, if I may, something about reports. Okay. Um, Sarah, you wanted to comment? Yeah, it was, it was just to, to kind of add to that. So I had confirmation from um, Chris Harrison's team that the work in the CCTV room has actually started. Yeah, so the upgrade of the CCTV room is underway, if not all nearing completion. And then going on from there, the cameras will be upgraded as soon as the CCTV function is in place with that high high tech system in there. Yeah, there's one week left of fitting. They've been in there three weeks. It was a four week project, so nearly there. Um, okay, and you just want it. Was there anyone else? And otherwise I'll let Councillor Crew just quickly finish off over some stats he wanted to give us. Yes, Mr. Okay, Mayor, one of the things that okay. uh, PNF uh, wanted in this is, is better reporting of the use of the cameras and any crimes are found. This is a report which uh, I think we need to get everything in place and then monitor that and I will have a committee meeting on that in North Somerset to make sure the report is meaningful. What I don't think we need is the usual report which has got all the cameras listed and whether there's been an event. The other side of it, of course, because they're linking now with the police, it means the police information can be better in terms of the information. So we will get a more meaningful report as PNF requested, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Um, I think that's it then. So do we have uh, approval for um, the procurement? I suppose it's a procurement now. We haven't procured it yet, have we, even though they're getting on with it. So I assume that, Sarah, what you're looking for is approval for the spending of the money. Yes, please. Approval of the spending of the money to come out of the capital reserve that you made provision for and also approval of the cameras that have been suggested or an alternative if it's not all of them, please, Mr. Mayor. And that is within the budget. It is, yes. Oh, OK, approval. All, move approval. Seconded, please. Seconded by Councillor Lagasse. Um, she's the first on screen. Uh, so all those in favour, please show. Thanks, Willis. Uh, that's unanimous, I believe. I think everyone's voted in favour of that. So thank you very much. Um, item 12, uh, the lease of Ellen Park West from Decharge. If, uh, Malcolm, if you'd like to. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So this has already been to Policy and Finance Committee more than once, but to cut a very long story short and save members time, basically it's the Ellenborough Park West is a wasted asset. So the East Park, the town council purchased um, quite a few years ago and manages as a sort of dog walking park and play area. The slightly larger West Park is owned by the Clifton Diocese and how was being used by the Catholic Church and school um, as a school playing field and for fates occasionally it was not generally open to the public as a whole but in recent years it's been completely closed off by them because of health and safety concerns with uh, people getting in with the intermittent use and then leaving needles and things. So the diocese offered a, hundred and, a long lease, possibly something like a hundred years to the town council. Um, there were some concerns about taking on that commitment and the costs and especially the fact that it's a site of special scientific interest. We, have been, we were talking to both the diocese and the um, uh, Natural England up until March, but that wasn't really concluded. Um, in the meantime, well, we've got this wasted asset. There's no doubt that the coronavirus situation has caused some mental health concerns for people, some people being afraid of infection or losing relatives or fear of losing their livelihoods, etc. And um, working with Faye, our excellent new grounds manager, well, under a year anyway, um, 
we, she came up with the idea of a short lease of say three years, which doesn't commit the council to anything long term, but to develop it as a very sort of gentle well-being park, um, which people could use. It wouldn't have lots of hard landscaping or anything built in it, but would just be enable people to walk in it. The central area would be mowed. The trees would have to be watched, of course, to make sure they're safe. Um, but there's lots of evidence that parks are good for people's mental health. Um, it would be a quiet, semi-natural place for contemplation, walks and gentle activities. Um, possibly a bit of people could use it for Tai Chi or just strolling around. Um, and the three-year lease is relatively risk-free. It would be very cheap to maintain. The net cost has been calculated in total, um, working with the deputy town clerk of uh, about £4,300 a year, but the grounds managers made efficiencies of much more than that in the last year. So the cost can be completely absorbed. And therefore, um, I would like to recommend, there are recommendations on my report. And the recommendation is really to go ahead with a three-year peppercorn lease, there's no rent, there's no rates on a park. Um, so uh, with a view to occupying it, to open it to our local community to use, uh, essentially as a, a gentle well-being park, there'd be some limited school use, which has been agreed with the uh, diocese, um, and give it a try. If it turns out to be problematic, the three-year lease doesn't commit the council to anything major, but just gives us long enough to do something for our local community. And it could be started really quickly with the diocese um, coming along with it. So I would recommend that. Thank you. Okay, Mr. thank Mayor. you. Thank you. Any speakers? Councillor Bell. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and thank you for, for that report, Malcolm. I mean, strongly, strongly support this. I think it is a, a really opportunity, a really good opportunity, as Malcolm says, to to bring the park back into active use again. Um, Central Ward uh, and the town centre is, uh, as many members will know, a, a community that is um, amongst the most deprived um, in in Western, and um, in particular, some of the uh, health and well-being outcomes are amongst the poorest so I think something which is absolutely geared towards encouraging and enabling some of those health and well-being um, uh, practices uh, is is really really to be welcomed. Um, my, my only comment just to, to float for officers benefit is um, I hope that they will also be able to um, explore opportunities to enable other schools in Central Ward to make use of the um, the park as well. So not just Corpus Christi, who have obviously had a historic connection, um, but also Wallace Scott and Christchurch primaries yeah. who are relatively nearby and, and also don't have any um, outdoor space. So I think particularly for things like sports days and so on, they would really welcome the opportunity to make use of the space um, on an occasional basis. Um, and otherwise, just say thank you very much to the officers who've worked so hard to to bring this off in in such a very sensible uh, way. Thank, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Gibbons. Thank you. I was going to make the same point about extending it to other schools, and I also welcome this. I think it's a great opportunity to enhance the provision for people in the centre of Western. And it may go some way if we handle this properly to um, uh, alleviating the stresses that there sometimes are between park users and dog walker park users because we've all as councillors had people come to us to complain about trying to enjoy the park and yet having unruly dogs running about so perhaps this area yes. well be um, park will be a place that we could and I hate to say this as a dog owner, but perhaps we could have this as a non-dog walking park so that there is somewhere people who don't appreciate dogs running up to them when they're there with their children could use and other dog walkers will know that the other part of the park they can take their dogs. In. Just a suggestion. Oh, I think that's a very good suggestion and I think that'll probably be taken on board by officers as long as we signpost very clearly that the park across the road is for dog yes. walkers so people don't feel excluded generally. Uh, the only other thing I would say based on what Councillor Bell has said 
would it be possible to simply talk to officers about the ability to paint a running track on it for the school running days and stuff they do normally at the end of the year and encourage them to use that park uh, where they don't have uh, rather than just not having a sports day uh, so it just might be something very simple we can do it doesn't have to be a full 400 meter running back for school children um, just a strips so mm -hmm. a consideration that we might approach the schools to say they can use it uh, and we'd be happy just to make sure the grass is cut and it's nice and tidy for them um, anyone else would like to speak uh, councillor Payne uh, thank you mr mayor yes um yeah, I'm very keen that the town council gets on with this, um, taking over the, 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 the West Park and getting it improved and open to the public. Um, the, the negotiations do seem to have been dra dragging on for, for a little while now. Um, but I, I just don't really understand uh, why we, we've reduced the lease down to three years now, because it does, it does strike me that that, that does intr introduce the risk that we could um, we could take it over, do some improvements, get the mowing done and, and, and that sort of thing. And then potentially we could lose it again after, after the end of the three year period. So I don't know why, why we're not uh, pursuing um, the, the longer lease from the start. Can I answer that, Mr. Mayor? Yep. So there's um, essentially two reasons. One is that some members were concerned about the longer term costs. We were trying to get some written assurances from Natural England, given that it's a site of special scientific interest. And they do have a lot of ability to say, no, you can't do work on trees. No, you can't cut a path, that sort of thing. I think in practice, that's not very likely, but it was a concern that some members had. And secondly, so it gives you, a short lease gives you the chance to try it out. And the other reason is it can be done very quickly. A short lease could be, it can be almost off the shelf, I think, and um, uh, can be entered into more quickly. I think if you were going into a hundred year lease, um, there's a lot of things to consider looking over that very long time. And it would probably take longer to negotiate the detail of the legal document which once entered into is legally binding for that length of time but the intention talking to the diocese would be to use those three years to test it out and well within that period to look at developing the and entering into the longer lease which would have re of course require a, a further councillor um, resolution other than we could enter into that lease with the uh, um, caveat that we have a right to renew, of course, which would then protect Councillor Payne's concerns. Uh, Councillor Clayton. An option. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Can you hear me? Yep. Um, was I right in hearing that um, the park is currently locked down due to drug paraphernalia uh, or drug use in, in the park? That was, um, one, that was one of the reasons. So um, because the church and school use was intermittent, it was locked up a lot of the time, which made it a secluded area, perhaps a little even more attractive to drug users. And the school didn't have the ability to clean up um, needles. Obviously, there is the risk that you will get uh, the same uh, or a similar problem to some extent with the council managing it. But the council also has the grounds team who manage that risk in the East Park and in the Millennium Green and any, any other sites that we have. Indeed, the cemetery has probably had more problems um, in recent years than any of the parks. So the grounds team would routinely check it, um, empty bins and litter, etc., and are geared up to to deal with that. Yeah, I mean, my, I'm wholeheartedly in support of this, and I think it's a great idea. Um, obviously, my only concern was if we were going to start using it for sports days and stuff like that. That obviously the um, the park is thoroughly checked and risk assessments have been put in place because the last one I want or any of us want is for any child to um, stumble across anything that they shouldn't be, you know, that's danger to health. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Councillor Rousseau. 
You're talking with Muton again, Councillor Rousset. Can, uh, can Becky, can you unmute her, Councillor Rousset? Uh, am I no. Yes, yeah, I can hear you now. Uh, somebody must be muting me then after I've spoken, because I have to keep putting it back. Anyway, um, just very quickly related to Councillor Clayton's comments about drug use. Is there any facility for locking the park at night? Welcome. Um, if you want me to answer that, the answer is yes, but to be honest, people can still climb over the fence. And in fact, the fact that uh, there was no public in there for most of the time, possibly arguably encouraged people to go into a secluded area, but there's no absolute solution to that. Most of the parks aren't locked, at least to pedestrians these days. It's... Thank you. Um, Councillor Bailey. Ah, thank you, Mr. Mayor, I hope you can hear me. Um, I would yeah. be happy with um, a three-year lease. I think um, I am worried about, I mean, I know at one point there were people camping out there, um, and dog walkers I know are a problem, and obviously uh, Faye's got an excellent idea to make this um, uh, a park um, uh, mental health friendly, um, but there are also issues with, um, as I said, probably drug taking and so on. Um, probably we're the best people to deal with it, but if we have a three-year three lease, uh, we can resolve, we can work out and resolve those issues, hopefully to our satisfaction, and it won't cost us a huge amount of money. Um, what I would like to propose is that we have an annual review. Um, I know that's another task for officers and so on. And, um, this is assigned to community services um, to oversee, and... Um, uh, a, a judge is or otherwise. Thank you. So let's be let's be clear, Councillor Bailey, before you switch yourself off. Yeah. What do you mean by a review? I mean, it'll be reviewed in the normal terms of the reports to your committee or whoever chairs that committee now. Um, but in terms of what you're actually asking for, um, in terms of activities or in terms yeah. of condition, I mean, because you can ask for those, you can ask for those things anyway. Do we need to schedule a report every 12 months or will you just ask for it? I think we need to schedule it and I think, yeah, all those aspects that you've covered. Um, it, basically, I'm worried about the costs because whatever we take on suddenly becomes a very, very cost heavy exercise. And if it's only 4,000 a year, well, at least we, that's what we've accounted for. But if it does get out of hand and we're having to, take uh, or um, officers to go in there because of repeated drug taking problems um, and dog walkers also becoming a problem. Um, I'm just worried that this is going to get out of hand. So if we have an annual report um, that we take it on the, rev uh, the okay. annual the, um, uh, review of just, 12 months. Just, a matter, of, just oh. a matter of information then. Malcolm, do we need to propose an annual report or is that it, the wit of the uh, the chairman of that committee to ask for it? Well I, obviously the chairman can ask for it and we'll do it um, if you want to include it in your resolution to put down a marker just to comfort you that's fine but my only my only concern and I don't know what other as much as you like. I don't know what other councillors feel but I just feel if every single item we take on wants an annual report individually it could become a real real headache for officers, but if other councillors think it's a good idea. Um, um, currently, Parks and Play Areas actually come under Tourism and Leisure Committee, by the way. That may change with the review that was ongoing and will come back in September. Um, okay, so you've, you've proposed to add a, uh, a an additional report tw every 12 months for that. Um, so that would become an item, an, an amendment, so we'll vote on that in a second. Uh, just do, do I find favour with councillors in terms of possibly just seeking um, a, a, a right to renew that lease at three years? So if we do spend money and we feel we want to renew it and the, and the church says no, they want it back because we've spent money, we then will have a right to renew our, our lease on it. Would that find favour with councillors or should we just leave it at the three years and, and just 
play it by ear then. Would that find a seconder from the chair? Yeah, I'd second it. Okay. So we have two amendments. We have two amendments then. First, the first amendment will be a yearly report. Um, and so, uh, so if that is approved, then that gets added to the recommendations. I'm correct, aren't I, Malcolm? Uh, yes, I don't think you had a proposal for the actual recommendations. Um, I think, I th no, I think Councillor Bailey sorry. proposed it. Did we have a seconder? Oh, see, no, we hadn't had a rec for the original okay. recommendations. Well, unless oh. Councillor Bailey was proposing the recommendations with that addition. I was. I wasn't too. Okay. Right, thank you. And as a proposer, are you happy to explore the right to renew? Yes. That gives us the right. We don't have to. Okay. So with those two ad items added to the proposals, are we in favour? All, all those in favour, please show. Councillor Willis. Thank you. I think that's carried. That appears to be carried. Yes, yeah, it's carried. Thank you. Thank you very much then. So on to item 13 motion to council understanding order 11 uh, councillor thornton hi so you should have all the motion the motion in your pack um the motion proposes that western supermare town council becomes a living wage accredited employer by joining the living wage foundation scheme the labor group proposed this as part of the discussions around the town council strategy earlier this year but now due to COVID-19 this seems to become even more relevant. The coronavirus crisis has exposed the low wages of many of our key workers such as care workers, shop and supermarket workers and delivery drivers. These are the people who have been risking their lives by going to work to keep our society going and allow the rest of us to stay at home and stay safe. Many of these workers have paid the so-called national living wage of £8.72 an hour if they're over 25 or the minimum wage of £8.20 an hour if they're age 80, over 18 um, but under 20 sorry over 21 and under 25 or £6.45 an hour if they're 18, 18 and 20. The real living rate, uh, wage rate is higher because it is independently calculated based on what people actually need to live on. Um, so in the um, uh, full living wage motion, which is in your agenda pack, um, I've tried to outline the benefits and costs. Um, paying the real living wage benefits employers and employees, but it also benefits the local economy. More money in workers' pockets means more money spent on local high streets and in local businesses. This will be crucial going forward if our town is to recover economically. If we pay our town council staff a real living wage, we set an example for other local employers to follow. The annual cost to the town council is relatively small. Um, the chief financial officer, uh, uh, Sarah Pierce, has provided me with um, some of the costings, and I think that she sent them round to you all earlier. So um, the cost actually for our permanent staff, who currently earn less than living wage, um, is £277.58, that's the annual cost to raise them up to the real living wage. Um, and there's an additional cost for our casual staff of uh, a bit over £3,000. Um, but it does need to be noted that we haven't actually used many of our casual staff this year. So if we were, if we do vote for this proposal, it's unlikely that uh, we will pay um, that additional cost. So the figures that Sarah's provided include all on cost and also the forthcoming um, real living wage increase, which is announced every November. And although we don't know precisely what that is, it's usually around 3%. In addition, there is an annual accreditation fee um, of, uh, to the living, paid to the Living Wage Foundation of £288. So the cost of this may be small, and it really is very small. But the message it sends to the wider community is huge. And that message is that Western Supermare Town Council values those low paid workers who have put their lives on the line during the coronavirus pandemic. At this difficult time in our town and country's history, we have an opportunity and an obligation as a town council to set an example 
and send out a signal to all the residents of Western Supermare that fairness demands all companies pay work of a wage that they can actually live on. Thanks. Thank you. Do you do you have a seconder? Do we have a seconder? Do we need a seconder to, to debate that? We've got a seconder with yeah, Councillor yeah, Agassiz. Okay. okay. So the debate, anyone would like to comment? Would you like to speak to that, Councillor Agassiz, or are you just seconding? Okay. Okay. Right. Anyone would like to speak? I'm going through the screen, so please, as there's no one speaking, jump in if you want to speak. Okay, Councillor Fox. Councillor Fox, you're you're on. If you can unmute, oh, there we go. I had a job un un unmuting myself. You're there. Uh, we can hear yes. you. Um, I'm I'm quite comfortable with the idea of the town council paying nine pounds thirty an hour minimum, uh, but uh, not joining the foundation. I don't feel it's the town council's remit to dictate wages to other organisations and businesses. So uh, I I would not vote for that, but I would vote in favour of us paying the minimum living wage of £9.30, no problem. Okay, thank you. C Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Mr Mayor. And just to come back on that point from Councillor Fox, uh, we wouldn't be dictating anything to other employers. It simply shows us as being committed to paying the real living wage. And, those of us who sit on the personnel committee will know that one of the issues that comes back a lot is how we attract people to come and work for us. And this accreditation from, uh, from the Living Wage Foundation, I think would send a, a good message to people who might want to come and work for us. So on those grounds alone, I think it's worth having the motion, but also going for the accreditation. So I support the whole motion. Okay. Uh Councillor Fox, would you like to come back to that? Well, I think we are dictating because it, it says in these notes that we ensure that our contractors pay the real living wage. And uh, a plan to ensure our regular contractors pay the real living wage and encourage everyone we do business with to pay it. So in my mind, that is dictating to them. And, you know, with the prospect of high unemployment coming because of COVID, I just think it's the wrong time to be uh, stoking up wages. I think it will cause more problems than it will solve. And as for, as Can for we... getting staff, I don't think we have any problem getting any staff if we need any. We never have in the past. Thank you, Mr. Brent. Okay, a point of information, Malcolm, if you can. Can we insist that our contractors show us their wage payments to their staff? That's a question because I simply don't know. Um, you can take into account social considerations these days, but to be honest, I can't answer your specific question off the cuff. I'd have to research it. The two bullet points in the motion at the end um, don't although the text of the um, document put forward by Councillor Thornton does refer to contractors, the two bullet points at the end, which I took to be the actual motion, as on the order paper as well, do not in terms include that. So I wonder if perhaps that's an aspect that could be looked at at a later stage, if you don't mind. I'd See well, this is not what he's indicating as well. Okay, Councillor Thornton, this is your motion. Uh, yeah, I, I can probably answer this. Um, basically, the, um, the live, in order to be accredited as a living wage employer by the Living Wage Foundation, you have to either be already or uh, agree to immediately pay the real living wage to your directly employed employees. Then you have to put a plan together of how you can get your contractors to also do that. So you don't have to do it immediately, but you do have to look at how you can factor that into when you, you know, contract, for instance, um, uh, well, I, I, I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head, 
um, that we would do. The, the people, I mean, they don't do it anymore, but the people who used to water the western in bloom. So you would have to look at how you could work with them to get them to pay the real living wage as well. Okay. So you don't they have could... to do that bit immediately, but you no. do have to pay your own employees immediately. For me, see, the, um, uh, unlike Councillor Fox, where I don't want to dictate to other employers, I think we've got a very good opportunity to be a very good example to other employers here. And I think there's no better time to do this than now, because we are heading into an economic crisis. And, you know, we're going to need, uh, if, for instance, COVID rears its ugly head again, because it hasn't completely gone away, we need our key workers and, uh, you know, we need people to be earning, uh, those that will be working, to be earning a decent wage. Okay, thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to vote on this, uh, Helen, because as mayor, I will stay out of it. But I would make one comment that in terms of just noting the report and the figures, that I must assume that the figures aren't as accurate as they could be, because if we insisted on living national living wage, which as you know is our policy as well as yours. Um, the fact is those figures of 2,154 will likely to be higher because our contractors will seek additional compensation to pay the wages that we want paid. That might be very right and this council might feel that's the right thing to do, that's all I'm saying. They, they, may, they may be, but they may be not. And of course, okay. you know, as I've just said, this is about putting a plan in place to yeah. work out how we can do this with our contractors. It's not about saying to them, do it immediately. No. Okay, thank you, Helen. Appreciate that. Anyone else like to speak? Okay, if I, uh, Ian, Councillor Porter. Mute. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mayor. Um, just a couple of things, really. I, I do think it's um, inappropriate to, um, to do this at the minute. Um, we're not a corporate company. We've just had a uh, tax rise of nearly 30%. Half of the preset nearly goes in wages alone within the town council. We just heard of a project just now. It cost £4,000 know, to implement and, keep and run a park for a year. Um, and the thing is, is at the moment, like there's a lot of people that are either furloughed or unemployed or going to be unemployed um, going forward. And I just think it's totally inappropriate that we should be looking at... Um, um, increasing wages at a time when uh, things are uh, in the situation that they are. Um, if we look at um, the audit report, and if you go to page uh, seven of the report, it says quite clear in, in conclusions, under salaries and wages, no issues requiring formal recommendations have arisen in this area currently. So at the moment, everybody's happy. So why are we, why are we worrying about things increasing uh, you know, the, the, and it's not just for one year, this is ongoing. And if we get bigger and bigger, then it is a bigger um, cost to the council. I don't see that is a proper way of dealing with um, council tax when if we raise through the preset taxpayer who are struggling at the moment to pay wages to other people. I'm sorry, I don't agree with it at the moment. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Agassiz. Oh, you've just remuted yourself. You came on, then you remuted oh, yourself. Sorry. That's it. I'd just like to say, whatever the economic situation, we should be paying people a living wage. And it's extraordinary to hear us talking about there's going to be high unemployment, so let's pay everybody a wage that they can't live on. Yes. It's an extraordinary argument. And if we're talking about wonder, making Western a special place, isn't that something wonderful to be able to say? We don't employ people on wages that they can't live on. Thank, thank you. Councillor Bell. Uh, th thank you, Mr Mayor. I, I, I totally support this motion because I think it's absolutely right in, in, in principle uh, and on, a, on every basis. We're not, we're not talking about um, some sort of you know, uh, philosophic, philosophical point here or some sort of political point here. We're talking about the lowest paid people who work for the council and, and for our contractors for that matter, uh, getting a fair uh, day's pay for the job that they do. We're not talking about giving people who are, 
you know, living in mansions or, or, or fat cats a pay rise. We're talking about giving a fair day's pay to those at the very bottom uh, of, the, of the pay scales. Um, and, and frankly, it's, it's really disappointing at a time when uh, we've all been uh, quite happily going out there and applauding all our key workers and all our council workers for the work that they've been doing uh, throughout this COVID crisis to then start turning around and saying that, uh, that they don't deserve even the most basic um, uh, pay scales. You know, we're talking about a living wage here. We're not talking about uh, uh, anything more than that. And I, and I think to, to start talking about it as if it's some sort of crazy uh, notion is, is insulting to, to the people that, that work for us and, and anyone that we want to work for us. Thank you, Councillor Bell. Any further comments? I've got a few black screens, so, oh, Councillor Bailey, please. Yeah, um, I, well, I don't agree. I don't agree with this motion. I think this is gesture politics. Um, they put a label on something and just say, oh, we've got to do this. What our duty as councillors is to pay staff uh, a reasonable wage, a good wage, I'm not arguing, but just to blanket and just say, we've got to pay this, we've got to pay that. Our duty as councillors is to a duty both to the employees and to the ratepayers. And the ratepayers are people who not, don't necessarily earn a huge amount of money themselves, but they're forced to pay them. So our duty is to keep the rates to a reasonable amount. Um, I recommend that instead of um, approving this, that we pass this to the personnel committee for them to go through this item by item and see if it's justified, see what is sensible, because after all, that's what the personnel committee is for, is to, uh, is to on our behalf, to assess these items rather than have a blanket approval. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Right, okay. Uh, I'm not sure if Catherine Gibbons wanted to speak then, or she was just leaning. Yeah, and I just wanted to ask a question either of, of uh, the town clerk or Councillor Thornton, because I know she's involved in these things anyway. Can you just explain to me, and therefore other councillors, if the um, the Living Wage Foundation recommend an increase on wages, which is thus higher than the town or the government recommend for local government workers, how does that conflict or how's that conflict being dealt with currently or haven't we seen a conflict like that? Well, um, obviously the, um, uh, you know, town council staff currently, they get their annual pay increases um, by the, uh, the, the local government pay increase, which is negotiated by the trade unions. Now, every year the trade unions do have as their sort of negotiating stance that they would like the lowest paid local government workers to be paid the real living wage. But they haven't actually managed to quite achieve that yet. But I am confident in the next year or so that they will. Now, um, uh, uh, you know, as far as the unions are concerned, they generally support this uh, additional amount of money. I say generally, they do support this money. So, you know, you can still pay the, uh, what's called the NJC pay scale, but for this lowest level of staff, we, we've hardly got any at the town council. Mm. Why in a way this, this argument that we're having tonight is ridiculous because the, the amount of money it's going to cost us is tiny. You know, it, mm. it's going okay. to be pennies. Um, okay, thank so, you. Yeah. Yeah, uh, anyway, you can come sorry, up for, I, hang on. You can come up, you know, you can sum up in just a minute. It's just a, it was a question of information. That was all. And okay. I think I, I had one other person who wanted to speak. Was it Councillor Apton? Did you pop your hand up quickly or? No, okay. Was there anybody else? Please? Oh, Councillor Gibbons, Councilor sorry. Councillor Codling. Councillor Gibbons yeah. first, and Codling. Councillor Codling. Uh, and Councillor Sace. Sorry. Yeah. So, is it me now? I'm confused. Yes, uh, please. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, Captain. Um, I haven't got uh, I just want to say I, I do support this. Um, I'd say to Councillor Bailey that um, this is not a huge amount of money you're adding to people and he should know from his connection with citizens advice that if you pay people a decent living wage then you're going to reduce the number of people who get into debt you're going to reduce the claims for universal credit you're just going to make people's lives that little bit easier it isn't a lot to ask and as a town council we as councillors are community leaders in a sense we are setting an example which I would like to think that other institutions within Western would then follow. I mean, I know that 
University of Bristol, for example, pays its workers the real living wage. I don't know whether Western College does. If it doesn't, then I would hazard that the town council doing this might be a driver to encourage them and other institutions to do so. So I, I do definitely support this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Codling. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, it's, it's a difficult one because we're, we're querying process as well as probably largely accepting it's, it's, it's a laudable thing to do. We, we all want people to be on whatever the, the calculation is for living. And I think somebody's made the point that that could well be um, much more than it is now. Um, my, my primary concern is that whilst yes, um, I think similarly with uh, equalities duties, Malcolm might correct me, when we contract people, um, we have a responsibility to look at their equality policies. We would choose to have contractors who are compliant with that. So if we follow down this process, we would choose contractors who are setting this pay grade. Now, already very, very distressed businesses, what Councillor Thornton describes as not much money, £4,000 would be absolutely devastating to a small business that, who are struggling already. So passing that incumbency for them to, you know, if they want to be a contractor of our choice as a town council, and we want to surely be supporting local businesses to Western, but if we have that prerequisite that they can't meet, and they are no longer our contractors, they go out of business, more people lose jobs. So I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant about the, um, about the consequences as this is carried out to the nth degree. Okay, Councillor, Councillor Sace, uh, who was next? Hi, uh, thanks Mr Mayor. Yeah, um, I, I, I really do support this. Um, again, in Western we, we do have a high number of uh, people on universal credits, um, especially in, in the current climate. And, you know, I, I remember the days when you could pick up a loaf of bread for like 35p. Now it's like £1.20, you know. So, so I, I, I think the fact that we're debating it is, is just preposterous to me, you know, because we have a high lot of food bank users and maybe we can get those people out of the food banks. And, you know, and it's, it's, it's all about if we pay people more, then, then possibly they'll pay more into our local economic growth. And as Western, we can then grow. And so I fully support this motion. Thank you. Councillor Pepperell. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, hear you now, yep. Yeah. Um, I do feel quite strongly on this point, but if one cannot pay a proper living wage, you shouldn't employ anyone. That's all I have to say. Fair enough. <laughs> Good chat. Right, okay. Um, is there anyone else or have we got there and, and Helen can, uh, sorry, Councillor Thornton, sorry about that, too familiar. Uh, can um, sum, sum it up? There we go. I think it's on you, Councillor Thornton. Okay, well, it's been uh, an interesting debate and, you know, I recognise some of the comments about, you know, whether the timing is right for this, but I, the reason I brought this forward because I think the timing is precisely right and that is because of coronavirus, because of the fact that, as I said in the motion and in my little speech beforehand, that, you know, when we've been out clapping for our carers and key workers, we've all, you know, we've been clapping for those people and most of them, the delivery drivers, the supermarket workers, the care workers, most of them earn less than the real living wage. And in many ways, um, you know, this is not just about our staff and our contractor staff. For me, this is about us setting an example. Um, and, you know, if we vote for this tonight, we can, you know, have a press release about it. Once we get accreditation, we can use the Living Wage logo on our website and all our um, paperwork, etc. And it will be very clear then that Western Town Council thinks you know, and want to encourage other local businesses to sign up to this because actually, yes, it does cost a bit of money, but what employers often find is that they gain that back because they 
keep their staff longer and they don't have to recruit so often and they save money that way and they get a more productive workforce. So uh, that's my summing up. Thank you. Okay, so straightforward. Uh, it's either for or against. So um, you've got the motion in front of you. So all those in favour, please show. I believe 16, if you'd like to confirm. Keep your hands up a minute, it's being confirmed. You okay, Malcolm, do you come with the same? I'm struggling with the two screens, I'm sorry, because people appear yeah. in different places. I had 16, if that helps, Malcolm. Yeah, I think that's right, I think that's right. Yeah, I've done it again at 16, yeah. Okay, those against, please show. Those against the motion. One, two, three, three, four, eight, six, seven, eight. Uh, no, I think eight, eight, I think. I think I've got eight. I think. Okay, well, it's... It's clearly, clearly carried. So thank you very much. Um, I assume that goes now back to officers to implement and to the personnel committee to make sure it's implemented. So um, I assume that's the route it takes. So th thank you everybody. Uh, that's it tonight. I'm sure we'll be glad. Two, two and a half hours. That wouldn't have happened if you're in the town hall. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say a couple of quick thank yous. Uh, thank you to you because we clearly had more debate on online which is most unusual we see more debate here than we uh, certainly do on any north somerset uh, for council meeting so i think that is a, a, an accolade to us in terms of the town council because it just shows we are engaged in these subjects um i'd like to thank officers of course but i'd like to particularly thank becky walsh because she's made this happen uh, yep. and she's uh, had to put up with lots of people who are uh, like me who is rubbish with IT and made sure everything works so thank you Becky for that uh, and I'm sure everybody feels the same so you now can go and have a, a drink or something or a cup of tea if you fancy but uh, thank you very much and good night to everyone <laughs>